Perfect. Then uh, welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. So we will now move to the next session. And the next session is um, a bit uh, of an opportunity for the demos of the site to share their insights when it comes to regulation. So within the, the site project, uh, in each of the demonstration sites, we will organize two regulatory meetings uh, over the course of the project. So these meetings are very much an opportunity for the demos to engage with regulators uh, from the national or from the local level to, the, to expose a bit the barriers and discuss some of the opportunities when it comes to regulation in their home countries. And uh, the first step with uh, organizing those meetings was to meet with each of the demonstration sites and uh, discuss a bit with them um, and their views on regulation in their uh, national states. And it was a very, very interesting discussion. And we've had uh, various types of answers, uh, ranging from some of them pointing at specific regulations that were uh, hindering the implementation of their energy communities or collective actions, to others uh, pointing more at regulations that are currently in the oven, uh, which could be an opportunity to solve uh, some of the barriers they were currently facing. And also, uh, interestingly, some highlighted that rather than waiting for the perfect regulation in a certain way uh, that would solve uh, all the barriers that they were facing, they were trying to work uh, within the existing uh, regula regulatory framework. Uh, be it the regulation targeting energies, but also regulations that were existing in other sectors that they could use in a certain way to help implementing their demos. And uh, so the idea of the session, as I mentioned, is really to give the floor to the demos. And uh, I would invite, maybe we can, to start uh, Belgium. Uh, so uh, our, we have two demos in Belgium, and I would invite uh, Johan uh, to start a bit to give us his views on um, the realities of the regulatory world in Belgium uh, specifically. So, uh, Johan? Johan, you're muted. Um, good morning, this is Johan from Enbro uh, in Belgium. Uh, we are operating um, towards residential and company and governments and helping them to understand what their energy bill is about and how they can reuse the cost and the energy consumption uh, of all of their activities. And we're doing this at this moment, I think, in seven countries across Europe. Um, when it comes to uh, the issue of regulations, uh, with anything to do with energy transition and in specific within the energy community uh, domain, we've got a very simplistic uh, approach to this. Um, instead of trying to change regulations to, so that we can get the final 10% of the final perfect solution working for everybody, we are focusing in only on the first 10% because if you start discussing about the final 10%, you forget about doing an action. And we have discovered because the way we are created probably also, we have discovered that if you want to be active in this domain in many countries at the same time, it's well worth focusing on what you can do and not on what you cannot do. Uh, I've read this morning an article of the princess of, uh, of, of the Netherlands and she made the same kind of quote, but that led her to the decision to go uh, to a holiday in Greece while she should have been in lockdown. <laughs> so you have to be careful with, with a quote like that. Uh, but that's that anyway that's the way we look into it um we have been uh running two pilots uh, out of Enbro uh, in this project which is uh one is aster uh, it's a community uh targeting 165,000 uh social tenants uh, tenants in social housing so it's 165,000 uh, families living in total in 80,000 buildings uh, and uh, we've developed a project for a very simple solution. Let's put solar on all of these rooftops as most of the directors in all of these organizations wanted to do so. 
Uh, regulation uh, is an important element in social housing. It comes from two domains, regulation to, uh, which has to do with housing and regulation which has to do with energy. And on top of that comes the possibility in future of energy community. One of the most interesting aspects there is sharing energy within the building because you can imagine in this kind of context, you'll, you'll be able to do so, which will be something that might happen maybe in two or three years when it is being implemented in the Flemish region. Now, in that project, I think we found one million reasons for not getting going forward, which has always to do with regulation, with re re nitty gritty details, which just stop you. And what we've done is just we just continue to do uh, from a, an energy point of view, from a technical point of view, and from a financial and even a social point of view, we continue to re-engineer our solution so that we, at the end, we found something that worked. And it's kind of strange why it always came to a solution and probably because the sun is for free and then we started with a free resource so that we could always work it. We now see in the different models that we are running that in a rainy country such as Belgium, we can create solar energy cheaper than the energy which is being injected on the grid by a nuclear plant in Belgium or any other plant because that's the market. So the levelized cost of energy of solar is lower than the, the energy cost on the market, which means well, you just put the solar everywhere and the whole thing is being reduced to how long do you want to wait before to have a payback of all of your solar panels you put all together, which is an entity that will work for next 30 years. So it all has to do with patients on how much they want to make money in, 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 in that period of 30 years. Patients on 30 years, which, and then it's kind of a, a statement I make on that, uh, should be compared to the patients that nature had and the cosmos had for creating this blue planet that we have in red. So it's, it's an irre irrelevant discussion if you go uh, uh, like that. And so it's only about greediness that makes the, the people say that self-consumption and, uh, and, and the cost of solar. So we've moved this forward. Um, we've succeeded in placing out a tender into the market for EPC companies to go for that. Uh, a number of them are now being invited to place an offer and we should be ready probably by October this year to have the first uh, installations going live. At the same time, I'm seeing at the very high level, European investors look at this project and they're kind of saying, we've got, uh, one of them has $200 billion, oh, sorry, euros available uh, at an interest rate below half a percent to say, I want to put all of that money in there and say, well, the project is not big enough, but it's a good pilot because the rest of uh, the Housing Europe is also looking at this project and now we will be targeting something like 23 million families. So being pragmatic, uh, if you want to have energy transition, any transition will start with an action, start with the first easy steps, baby steps. Next thing we've tried, and that's also something interesting and that I've touched the subject that was, uh, was raised uh, earlier today, uh, is within Fluctus, where we're using uh, a combination of let's do something with energy and then uh, and give people kind of a feeling, oh, we're doing it ourselves, which is a strong emotion of self-sufficiency in whatever context you want to place it. And we're using it uh, in combination with uh, some fiscal tax incentives, which has to rate it which is related to entrepreneurship, which is something we can use in Belgium. We can't use it in all of the countries where we are active. So that, also, that has to do with regulation, but where it was active, we've been testing it and we've tested this idea that if you want to have people to do something new together, maybe it's easier if they are already doing something together so that we just have to increase that. Okay, maybe you should do it the same thing. So that was the idea of a hunting club with a lodge we put some solar on top of the, of the lodge. That's an easy one. But extending that beyond that solar lodge and saying you should do something about energy, we found out that we could lose a very much a lot of time in explaining them how to look at what that energy community could be and what energy transition means. And they find that very, a very interesting and intellectual discussions. They drink a lot of beers while talking about energy, which is a good thing, uh, both for the brewery and for the energy uh, community in general, but they never come to action because at the end of the day, they say, we've learned so much, so much, so many new things, which kind of block us of doing any action at all. So the, the, the message that we got from, the lesson that we got from there is that don't go to existing communities because they either 
don't think it's their core reason for existence. The hunters will not start putting solar on the top of the, of the roof of each of the hunting families. They might do on the lodge because it's fun so that they, they can load their mobile phone while hunting a deer, whatever. Um, even existing energy communities, we found some of them in which we started talking then, and an example there was a community where they were doing crowdfunding to put solar on the rooftops of the farms. And I said, that's a great idea, but you could also put roof, uh, solar on the rooftops of the families which are doing, which are part of the crowdfunding, and there it stopped because they said, no, no, because if we're going to say that, that we're saying something which is contrary to what we've been uh, uh, claiming before, that's the, that the, the return on investment is better with the farm, which has to, remains to be seen, than the return on investment when you put it on your own roof, because when you put it on your own roof, you've got direct savings uh, compared to commercial pricing. So what we learned there is that if people are in the community and already doing something and injecting them with new ideas is very difficult because sometimes they have this religious belief that they had an idea, even if it's a wrong one, they can't get away from that idea. So creating energy communities is be very pragmatic, give a very simple solution that those people, that people before they get into the community don't need to learn too many new things because every sentence with new information is a step away from taking from them taking an action. Just imagine you buying an orange in, in, uh, in a retail shop. If somebody is going to explain you how the orange is being grown, you will never buy an orange. If you, somebody says it's biological, okay, I'll say biological, but don't explain to me biological because my taste for oranges might go away or my patience will go away. So that's something that we need to make very sure don't do this. Um, and second, um, if they already have a conviction, uh, test it. And if they are stayed to their condition, uh, to their conviction, well, you, can, you, you might support them and say, well, grow, grow further, but you will not be able to, if there is a mistake or a flaw in their construction, you will not be able to, uh, to, to direct them towards something else. Thank you, Johan. Um, then staying in Belgium, we will move to the other demonstration site we have there uh, with Tom from Thermovolt. Are you there, Tom? Yeah, I'll be presenting together with Tom uh, Eric. Oh, from perfect. Hi, Eric. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so <laughs> Thermovolt uh, in is. Uh, we are an energy management company. So largely speaking, we provide uh, energy management using electrical thermal appliances. And in the pilot in uh, Belgium, which translates to three kinds of services. For one, it's energy efficiency towards the end user. And for two, there are also two forms of energy flexibility. One, you could understand as, for example, increasing the self-consumption of, sol of solar PV installations, uh, which uh, gained momentum in the recent months in Belgium following the decision that, uh, that spinning back meters are not allowed anymore in January. And then for two, it's also serving the, providing an ancillary services to the grid operators um, on the national scale, like um, uh, frequency containment reserve and uh, automatic frequency restoration reserve. And then from our point of view, <laughs> I agree with a lot of points that uh, Johan, Johan mentioned when it comes to when it comes to message towards the customers. Because at the end of the day, when we speak about local energy communities, the word local already implies uh, that yeah, it's local, value is provided locally as well, services are provided locally, but at the same time, it limits your scope and the target audience to a certain amount of people, which in our case is not favorable. I, I guess in general, it's not favorable to others as well, because then it, uh, I kind of already sets you on the path, on the on the tracks to providing a custom service to this limited amount of people. And then custom development means also uh, limited scalability of it. And uh, when one is playing with appliances with lower installed capacity, like ours, then the scalability is key to the, to the solution. And we try to make it on the hardware side, on the software side as far uh, uh, custom as um, universal as it can be. However, still we need to be able to provide a scalable service to others. So from this point of view, the, the local energy communities face a lot of difficulties because of the lack of general financial incentive 
uh, in Flanders at least, to create one because uh, the, the impact is limited to local and but also the tariffs. So the value that we can provide with our service stemming from the way in which people are for the energy and uh, in a scenario where you have energy sharing uh, between different residents in an apartment block, let's say, um, because the way the value, the, the bill is calculated at the end of the day, the value we provide is very limited, meaning uh, it almost doesn't make sense. The, and there are other scenarios in business as usual with, with which we're in a much more simple solution, people are provided with explicit value. So yeah, our difficulties stem uh, in local energy communities stem partly from, from the way that the, the, the end of customer pro is provided with the bill at the end of the month, um, which doesn't have the story. And then the second part is, yeah, we, what we try to do is we, we indeed take those regulations and take, take those um, interpretations and this billing approaches and come up with other services that we can provide to individuals and also to a group of individuals as an energy community. And uh, yeah, so we provide other services. We try to design other services around the energy and around the appliances we uh, control in order to provide the value to the community and to the end customers. But only now, yeah, I would wish that it would be a little bit easier <laughs> from the point of view. At the end of the day, the local energy community as a body does provide a value to the energy system as a whole. And I would wish that it would be recognized in the way uh, people are built in order to provide either explicit or implicit value. Um, and right now it's not. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so as a company at Thermovolt, we work around trying to provide other services to those people. And um, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. Uh, then we'll move on to Austria with the uh, our power. So Ulfert, if you're there. So there I am, and I try yes, to perfect. share my my screen because I've prepared some slides. Probably you see it now. Yes. yes. We thought our power are normally not focused on barriers, but on cooperation and solutions. But uh, we have worked a lot on the question of regulation. And when asking about regulation, we have to uh, ask, uh, what are we focusing on? Barriers against what? Are there barriers or guiding rails to citizen energy? Because uh, also in this discussion, citizen energy is quite often uh, uh, seen as, a, as an instrument to help taming the fluctuation of renewables or to make consumers more beneficial to the grid or to integrate fluctuating sources of renewables into the established system, more or less. But uh, we think the main point is as laid out in the Clean, uh, uh, clean Energy Directive, that citizen energy is the core of the transformation to a new energy system that is to develop new and more suitable consumption patterns. So changing a culture we trade with energy to increase acceptance for the disruptive changes necessary since we are in the state of climate emergency and to make room for new creative actors as probably everybody knows in the Energy Market Directive, citizens should be put at the core, changing existing market rules, everybody knows this, and to empower consumers to participate actively with a target to achieve the union's renewable energy goals. And therefore, I mean, Austria has probably the most elaborated system coming in terms of, uh, of energy communities, but however, ever, we are still not satisfied with this. And I tell you why. Collective energy, as Dorian already said, uh, in the form of uh, 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 
on one building is operable in Austria since 2017. And now we have got in the new law, which is not decided on now, but will come, local energy uh, communities in the region of the local transformer, that means around a, a, a hundred households. The regional energy communities in, uh, in the region of a substation, that meaning around uh, three to 10 local transformers. And uh, the citizen energy communities, which can op operate all over Austria, but having no financial benefits at the moment. And uh, it works more or less as an aggregation of generators and consumers within the corporate, uh, the community in a 15 minutes uh, uh, aggregation of generation and uh, consumption. And this is more or less taken out of the normal balancing system because the balancing is taken automatically because consumption generation is added uh, or aggregated. The benefits of the system are quite attractive because it builds on reduction of grid tariffs, about 60% uh, is, uh, is uh, discussed at the moment of grid tariffs will be reduced taxes and levies will uh, reduce, be reduced as well, but only for the kilowatt hours within the energy community. The measurement, the accounting and the clearing is done by the grid operator. And that is one of the great problems we see. This image is just the iconic image in all the publications of the ministry. And uh, one very important point is the reduction of the grid tariffs uh, is on the local grid tariffs and therefore you have to discuss and calculate individually with every local grid operator. This is one of the main points which makes it extremely complicated because on the grid tariffs there is all the tax taxes and levies uh, put on the grid tariffs. So as we know from the experience with the, uh, with the collective generation in force since 2017, we have only around 400 uh, collective generation uh, uh, um, communities at the moment. And more than 90% is the, uh, the simple case with one operator of the PV system, one, uh, one consumer, in the collective uh, generation. And that is, or the reason for this is that the grid operators, the DSO have such a strong hold in it because uh, it's complicated. They, uh, they have technical problems, basis uh, of information, smart meters are necessary, but not available. Data management and data quality is extremely low and uh, DSOs are simply reluctant to, to work on this. And now with the new renewable energy consumers uh, uh, com, uh, communities, the DSO are even stronger because uh, they define who can join the energy community. Smart meters are even mandatory today, but still not available in most parts of Austria. Only in Upper Austria we have uh, uh, the rollout already finished. The accounting process is notoriously reluctant from the side of the DSOs. And of course, we hope that the provision of the new law may provide solutions in this direction. And there is also the non-regulatory uh, thing of a one-stop shop agency in preparation. But uh, and we are there as our power. But the point is, it seems quite, uh, qu quite a big uh, problem to have DSOs really as, a, as, a, as an agent of help in the thing. So the complexity of the model, the supremacy, the, the force of the DSO uh, uh, are 
tend to be the same barriers as they are already in the uh, collective uh, generation uh, case. Technical definitions are a problem to people to understand. So communication is extremely difficult. And uh, the other thing is DSOs are in the group of the incumbent and they have their own, own interest. At the moment, we see a lot of problems with new roof mounted PV systems, which are uh, blocked by the DSOs to build their own uh, uh, big PV systems. So the, the point from our side is uh, actually the energy transition is not a technical challenge and we have a big misconception if we focus on regulation on the technical side, we have to uh, to to, to um, have us to 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 find solutions to see the energy transition as a social and cultural cultural change. And uh, one of the key quotes I like in this uh, context is of Hermann Scheer, the German politician uh, who died um, already eleven years ago. <laughs> The transformation of the energy system has to come fast and therefore must not be made dependent on those with economic interest in slowing it down. And therefore we think we should put uh, the focus on the social action, which we as our power do mainly. Of course, we ac accommodate to whatever law will be, but the point is let's cooperate and joint forces. For instance, this is just a, a, a slide from the, uh, the uh, latest uh, of, of Patagonia a campaign, oh, which is just running now in uh, all over Europe. Probably mo most of you know, uh, Risk of Europe is, uh, is also a supporter of this campaign. And the thing we see is, uh, Actually, the regulatory barriers are not the real barriers. We have to, to put people together. And uh, as this quote from Randy Pausch says, the brick walls are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something and we want the power. So that was my point to this uh, discussion. Thank you, Ulfa. And Very. you already have you the screen back? Uh, no, but uh, uh, one, one second. There we go. Okay. Uh, very good. Thank you. So then uh, we'll move to the neighboring country, Germany. Uh, we have Andreas who's there. So uh, Andreas, please. All right. Thanks. Um, I made no slides as uh, our power um, but maybe they would be useful um, but I thought we are more a panel uh, yes um, so I don't know how much in we are to each other um, because I'm new on the project um, um, the EVH is a, a grid operator and uh, also um, we have some renewable energy power plants and also some fossil things uh, so for already 100 years uh, and we're owned by uh, 300 people out of the village. Um, so more or less, everything is fine and we are somehow an energy community. But um, up to the EU regulation, we are part of the regular system. And so there's no peer-to-peer -peer, uh, things uh, going on in, in, in our valley because it's still not possible in, within the regulation right now um by by final end consumers and um, for sure our system isn't so not fitting right now to a hundred percent renewable energy world um, um and and also our hardware system is not fitting for sure uh, if we have uh, hundreds of uh, electric uh, vehicles and and uh, the infrastructure and all those things um, so what I think, uh, what we need um, and what has to come is, is things like local energy markets, uh, like the EU also think uh, it should be. 
Um, and also, I think it's not a question of, of money in the first step. Um, it's, um, it's more um, for sure uh, a problem with uh, being part of the system and being invested in the system uh, by, by us. Uh, and the other part is uh, for a 100% uh, renewables future, it's, it's more the, the social part by, by NIMBY effect and, and things like that. So uh, this is in the background, one of our parts of our uh, water plants. And, and, and nowadays something like that, it's simply not uh, yeah, imageable anymore and, and also wind farms in the valley would be right now uh, not possible um, by the society. So I, I think that's uh, maybe the, the, the biggest challenge right now. But on the other side, if we're thinking about uh, how the, uh, the regulation and the system has to change that 100% renewable um, energy world would be possible is uh, for sure that um, somehow we we have to have um, some dynamic uh, grid fees uh, that we be able to to uh, balancing uh, the whole system on the local uh, sphere um, and also um, right now in, in Germany in, in many parts um, the, the grid fees and the costs of the uh, grid operation um, in the in the countryside is uh, yeah uh, running away from from the cities um, uh, but just uh, both parts can handle it together. And so we have to decide or th think about how we uh, making a fair um, splitting between the countryside uh, grid operation costs where renew renewables are and the, the cities. Uh, and so that's one of the real things uh, I think where we have to think and discuss about. And also right now for the changing, the at least the grid operators, um, we have, um, yeah, not the necessity to think about uh, the smartness and how we can handle it because in the regulation, um, just the capital costs are bringing the money uh, for us and the operational costs where we would have if we have to think about uh, smart solutions, um, we, we don't have any benefit of that right now. And that's uh, for sure another part. Uh, why it's still going so slow, uh, the transition. Um, and um, up to the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, market things, um, right now it's simply by regulation not possible. And also all the, the rules by uh, billing and, and things and changing uh, the supplier. And so they are too slow and um, still yeah, related to the, to the old uh, system. Um, and, and, and so if we have some energy communities right now, they are more up to, to marketing uh, things. So they are not representing the real rules and um, necessities of the, the energy system. They are more um, nice apps or, or things like that. So all those energy communities are still um, those who are really trying it in, in somehow some sandbox uh, surroundings. You know, because at least uh, we heard uh, from our power um, with the smart meter gateways and so, um, but we still uh, would have in the valley not the, the infrastructure um, um, to to set up such a peer to peer um, uh, surrounding because um, the meterings or also the, the technologies in the local grid in the in the grid operation, we are not able to to make a proper balancing uh, on our local sphere so there have to change for sure also some technical things uh, before we are able to do the energy community things yeah so maybe thank you andreas uh i see you first uh, you <laughs> had your hand up <laughs> uh right i think you don't need any smart meters to do a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh exchange and energy sharing because i mean what we do as our power is working without uh, smart meters at all. I mean, if there are smart meters, they have their benefits, sure. But if you don't, anyway, they are not the green electrons moving because I mean, we have alternating currents. They are just vibrating with uh, 50 Hertz 
the only thing uh, really flowing is the money. And that's what we can assure and calculate that the consumer pays for the kilowatt hours he buys and we integrate kilowatt hours of a whole year. He buys from the producer. And that's the point. We are over-focused like, like, like in the story of the hammer and the nail to think of a technical solution. But what we need is engagement of, pe of people and co cooperation of people and the flow of money. So Andreas, we should work on this together. <laughs> yeah, please, uh, because I, I really need support. Um, no, but for, for, for example, one, one, one thing, um, a farm, uh, big roofs, no PV, um, uh, a living house, and now um, the farm has no money, uh, or I think they could get money from the bank if they would really like, but so my idea was or is um, set up one uh, PV system and maybe a battery and a, a heat pump uh, for, the, for the building, for the living building. And the, the, the farm side, um, I take it, uh, make a, a big uh, solar uh, plant on the roof. Uh, and um, even if it's not that worth anymore, um, make 100% feed in thing. Um, so not a community thing, but at least somehow to realize the PV system. Yeah? And now with the metering concept, it's, it's not that easy yeah? to, to set, just set it up and uh, making sure that we counting and every spot to any time uh, right that we are able to to uh, pay all the taxes and, and fees what are supposed to be yeah so if i would like to realize the, this um, pv on those roofs i would have either or not either but the, 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 the the guys out from the grid part in my company said okay i have to set up some new uh, cables yeah and that's something where I say, no, that's not smart anymore. Um, I have to have it with the meters. Um, and, and so I need the smart meters because otherwise I would be not uh, allowed to set up those uh, two or three PV systems um, and, and handle with more than one person by the consumption part. Yeah, so in, in the detail, we have always some complex um, problems why things are not possible or not happen. Yeah. And it's not the money because um, the, the lack of money by the by the farmer uh, I can compensate it yeah I, I have money more than enough yeah thank you very much for that so definitely a uh, future co future cooperation between uh, our power and yourself uh, thank you so then uh, moving on to uh, Estonia now uh, so Martin uh, the floor is yours Thank you. And I try to do quite quickly, I hope. Uh, I'm uh, Martin Saare from uh, Energy Expert from Tartu Regional Energy Agency, Estonia. Uh, and uh, what our agency is doing is uh, we are mainly working with uh, European projects and uh, also doing research, for example, ministries, in some cases, uh, publishing books and guidelines. And our main uh, uh, focus is on advising local municipalities and citizens in energy efficiency and renewable energy and reconstruction uh, topics. So, uh, uh, as I remember from previous discussion, uh, there was, uh, uh, I think, asked that why not start with owner associations? And actually, that is what we are doing in, in Tartu, Tartu Pilot. Uh, um, we are. Uh, this is the. We are uh, approaching to apartment associations, uh, mm -hmm. and this is the actually the uh, at the moment the most realistic uh, way to sort of uh, develop uh, community energy. Uh, it is more or less. Um, it is definitely. It is definitely collective actions that they can do if they renovate and. Uh, and if they install solar panels, uh, that is the, our focus in this project is that to uh, increase this uh, collective self consumption in, in the object, in the, in the building. So uh, less to the grid and more on-site uh, uh, consumption. And uh, 
in in our, our Estonian case, uh, I mean, we are working uh, with apartment associations as as we are used to do it, but now we are also uh, including and and supporting them more. In uh, we have done it anyway to support it them in renovation process, but now if they are uh, installing solar panels, we just need to uh, show what more benefits, what they uh, can do if they uh, make some mm, quite uh, easy uh, replacements in the electrical system that they can consume more on site, this is possible. And, uh, and uh, the panels uh, name also had COVID uh, issue mm, and uh, I also would like to maybe mention that of course uh, it has been a problem for us because uh, uh, as we are working in apartment association that uh, are consisting uh, just regular people who are not uh, thinking too much about uh, energy usage or, or co collective actions or whatever uh, this is very important that uh, uh, we are visiting their general meetings when they make uh, decisions uh, like uh, majority of votes uh, uh, from uh, apartment owners are are there that uh, if they can go for renovation for example so we need to visit the general general meeting uh, explain uh, what we can how we can support them what are the benefits of renovation and uh, uh, what are the benefits of uh, uh, increasing uh, uh, local uh, self-consumption from uh, renewables if they install them? Uh, and there is always a lot of questions and, uh, and answers that we need to uh, answer if we are visiting them. But uh, now, uh, from all this winter, we, we, this has been not possible. And uh, now in spring, uh, actually, we visited the uh, uh, apartment associations and and they are uh, for example just after that the first meeting they are quite interested to uh, go for renovation process and install monitoring equipment that we are uh, uh, introducing them and uh, and i hope the summer is bright that way that we will uh, reach our goal, goals that uh, are set in this project so thanks. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, now moving on to Greece, and uh, it would be interesting also to to hear from uh, Eron uh, on the issue that was just discussed before, looking at the adding more PV and the smart metering. Uh, what is your take on that? I think we have Constantina who's there. Yeah, hello everybody. Hi, Constantine. I hope you are all well. Uh, regarding our pilot now in uh, for the decide, um, we are uh, actually aiming to have um, residential end users that will be equipped with uh, smart meters um, that will actually provide them with the capability to uh, monitor and visualize in real time their consumption. So they will be aware any time um, of what their consumption is. And um, the idea will also be that uh, for the end users uh, that will participate in the decide pilot, pilot uh, will be also able uh, to use, um, let's say, um, a web service uh, through a dashboard for accessing, for accessing their own real time and historical data. And uh, they will also be offered with uh, information of the potential, let's say, savings that we would may have uh, by exploiting um, the generation of a self-owned uh, PV plant uh, that owns uh, Heron that's uh, located outside uh, in Athens. So the idea is actually... Um, here is to uh, to provide real time generation data of this PV asset or more assets would potentially would, would have uh, that uh, this data will be fed into uh, here on energy metering uh, platform and let's say that will serve as um, 
a dummy assets performance uh, information uh, under uh, let's say a real world um, under a real uh, world simulation uh, scenario uh, of an energy community uh, based of site risk investment so uh, here on uh, clients and the site pilot and users will have the chance to participate somehow in a virtual energy community uh, simulated by this uh, actual Heron's uh, PV asset. Of course, all this, for all this, we should have a smart meters uh, installed uh, in households for real that will uh, um, provide uh, users uh, with real-time visualization of their consumption. This is regarding, I mean, the smart meters, but if you want more details on the smart meter subtake, uh, 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 my colleague Costas at least can actually um, support on this or give you more information. Uh, or if you want to discuss more on the regulatory aspects and barriers that we have uh, uh, have been facing in Greece, I don't know. Yes, maybe uh, about the regulatory issues you've been facing for. Uh, Maybe a minute or so, if you can. Yeah, that. sure, sure. Um, in Greece, actually, uh, the issue of energy communities has been tackled uh, since 2016, if I'm not mistaken, with the uh, REST law. Uh, however, um, uh, following, um, let's say, the transposition of the Renewable Energy Directive, the recent in 2018, Greece also defined energy communities under its own law in, uh, in 2018 too. And um, with this law, um, we are trying to enable um, local community, natural persons, SMEs and local authorities to, uh, to participate in energy communities. Um, however, I would say that um, this framework, or as it is stated, or as it is considered, it is rather complex and fragmented by different laws and ministerial decisions, uh, which uh, introduce more complexity and additional administrative procedures uh, for the further deployment of uh, energy communities. Another um, barrier that has been, let's say, uh, if I would say barrier, but uh, another, let's say, uh, issue that we that has been um, um, we should mention here is that um, there is something like um, that the energy communities have actually been hijacked by private investors uh, who actually took advantage of the relevant legislation, the latest the latest legislation. Uh, to say the detriment of the genuine initiatives of the local communities. So as a result, the ministry in uh, uh, 2020, um, if I'm not mistaken, something like that, has decided that energy communities from, 2020, from uh, 2022 uh, will have to participate in, uh, compet in the competitive procedures uh, without any exemption. So they should bid uh, through market, uh, let's say, uh, uh, mechanisms in order to, to be um, deployed. That uh, would make um, more problems and arise more problems and barriers, because as you may understand uh, from also other examples in Europe, France, or probably Germany, I think, as I heard, that uh, the participation of energy communities um, in the energy market um, uh, under uh, competitive processes uh, with, let's say, big players, actors, uh, would make them to be excluded and not to possible to to participate. Um, that would be actually one, uh, let's say, <laughs> a very brief uh, view overview. Maybe uh, Costas, who is uh, Basilis, who is <laughs> also more in. Uh, in this area would give you uh, more information on barriers. Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, so just to add to what Constantin, I'm Kostas Basilis from Heron as well. Uh, just to add to what Constantin uh, stated as, as, as barriers, uh, uh, I would like to add um, a couple of things that were created by the pandemic uh, situation, which are complicating 
uh, the, the, the landscape are, uh, around energy communities. So uh, the first thing is that uh, because of the financial issues uh, that uh, we are now facing because of the pandemic, we, we, we see that it's getting harder for, you, uh, for energy communities to, to be financed. Uh, so uh, financial institutions have become more reluctant to, uh, to finance uh, such initiatives while they were very, uh, very bullish uh, uh, some, um, some year, a couple of years ago uh, regarding uh, whatever renewable project was in the market that was looking for financing. Uh, we now see that uh, uh, in, the context, in the context of energy communities were by low in Greece in order to have a, a, a meaningful energy community, it usually takes uh, from 50 to 50 persons at least to participate in the, in the corporate uh, um, shareholder structure of an energy community uh, that is quite hard for a bank to to finance because they are taking one by one the members of uh, the energy community regarding their credibility uh, and we we have seen large uh, large uh, banks uh, just refusing to to finance these projects as an answer uh, because we we also want to highlight uh, positive developments we see now some uh, real interesting crowdfunding initiatives. Uh, kicking in, and uh, we see potential there uh, to raise, uh, uh, let's say, some more social oriented funds, uh, people that are uh, on the investor side, but are, you know, socially and environmentally uh, aware uh, and caring uh, to, to start financing uh, small initiatives like energy communities. So that's one thing, that's a, a new barrier uh, that has, uh, has been added to the situation. Another one is that uh, because of the situation around the, the, the subsidy of existing renewable projects in Greece, this has been a long story, just like in Spain, we have seen uh, big haircuts in the solar tariffs and the wind tariffs in the past. So because of the pandemic, this uh, deteriorated a lot. So there are thoughts uh, in, on a governmental uh, level that uh, very, very interesting and fruitful uh, financing uh, incentives like virtual net metering which, as an exception, is, uh, is allowed for energy communities, they, they, there are thoughts about cancelling those, uh, those benefits. So we may see some, uh, some bad uh, changes happening from summer and going forward. And uh, this is something that is, is being discussed a lot in the community, in the, in the universe of energy communities in Greece. Uh, that's not something we, I mean, even as a heron, as a large corporate and uh, a big supplier of this, this is not something that we are I mean, pushing for, we, we don't see the reason because so far virtual admitting hasn't seen any, any, any big uh, uh, scale. And it's, it's really a nice incentive for energy communities, uh, you know, to invest in solar um, panels most, most probably and uh, uh, usually, and then have a reduction in the energy bill. Uh, again, as an answer to that, just trying to also highlight, uh, because I saw this very interesting, uh, statement that the, the wall is there uh, in order to test our willingness to, to, to pass through it or over it. Uh, as, as, a, as a corporate, we are, we are trying to develop uh, answers uh, that the, the, they are, uh, they are uh, mimicking virtual net metering or, um, um, or community initiatives, uh, collective actions, uh, and uh, try to, to provide access to, to solar capacity uh, for individuals. Uh, but through a, a, a more centralized, uh, I would say, economy of scale investment. So uh, Heron at the moment has a commercial uh, program, which is uh, very alike uh, to the community solar initiatives in the US. We think it's a very, uh, very innovative one uh, that is providing access to an end customer uh, and uh, directly linking the customer to a virtual solar capacity panel. Uh, and then uh, provides a kind of economically based virtual net metering facility in, in, in the customer's view. This is something that we have uh, launched uh, in the last uh, three months. Uh, it's going quite well so far. And I'm very proud to say that uh, uh, some ideas that we had initially developed for our participation in the SAI program, we have, we, we have the opportunity to actually put them within this, uh, this commercial uh, tariff program. Having said that, this, this initiative is quite flexible and in the future we are uh, very, um, very ambitious to expand it to, to make it uh, even more suitable for, for collective actions, I mean, for, for groups of people. 
Uh, in addition, another another uh, action we are trying to develop as a, as, a, as, a, as a company to address these these barriers is to help uh, energy communities build their 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 uh, their investment. Uh, we have we will host a, a solar panel investment within our uh, gas fire power plant facility just outside Athens, and uh, we are providing the land to to the people and the mechanism as a, as a supplier for the virtual net metering. Uh, between the members of uh, of that energy community, so that's that's something that is uh, going under uh, uh, development at the moment. Um, thank you, thank you, Costas. Yeah. Sorry, I'm very sorry. We need, we we need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yes, no problem. It's very interesting. Uh, we we have two minutes left, and I would like uh, still to hear from Dom X from Stratos. So Stratos, yes, yes. please. I hope you can hear me well. Yes. So. For Domic side, as uh, we were the least less developed, let's say pilot, the first year was uh, focused on technical development. So we have reached a very mature state now, both at the hardware level, at the, also at the end user level. So our smartphone application is available on both uh, of the major stores. We also managed to install approximately 50 devices at the in consumer households. So we mostly reach the target population, so the technical aspects are more or less completed. And uh, we look uh, promising to the next steps, uh, also in terms of the local legislation. So there is a very important uh, step that is taken. There is a local project called Saving Autonomous. This project uh, enables uh, it detached households or even blocks of buildings to perform energy efficiency upgrade and the subsidies that can be covered can exceed even 80 percent and the most important part is that it is uh, also targeted to collective energy action so uh, the owners of blocks of buildings can apply all together by issuing a, a, a new type of VAT number that is owned by all of them so this is the the best case we can find and the timing is also very fits very much with our uh, with our company progress, because the, the second phase of this program is planned to, planned to launch in the end of July. So we would very much welcome to move from targeting individual consumers to targeting groups of consumers. And the, the second uh, step, uh, the legis uh, second legislation, let's say, step that uh, fits very well with our plan is the release of the energy efficiency obligations schemes, the implementation plan for this, which is planned to, to be delivered by end of May. So uh, big energy players like energy suppliers will have uh, specific, specific obligations for energy efficiency upgrade at the side of the end consumers. So we see a very good fit between our solution and collective actions that can be pursued by big energy suppliers. So this is a direction we are uh, working uh, closely with Hiron to see how we can uh, implement and uh, abide by this. So we see the future uh, as a very good, uh, we see a very good timing as two, uh, at least two legislation, uh, let's say projects are very much in, in line with our company progress. So looking forward to the next year. Very good. So it seems like it's blue skies in Greece. <laughs> on your yes, side. yes. Yes, actually you can see it also in the background. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, very good. Then I saw there were some questions in the chat. So unfortunately, we don't have time to answer them directly, but we will send them to the speakers and uh, you will receive an answer by email. Uh, to your specific question. So with that, I will uh, give the floor back to Lucia. Uh, 